G'day guys, right here, Chief Espresso Officer. And today we're gonna to be looking at how to fix the dose control grinder from Brevels. So it happens on a lot of these little appliances. The main thing that goes is what's called the impeller blade. And this little guy sits underneath your burrs and it just helps distribute the grinds down the chute so that they come out here. And what is a classic symptom of this is when you start to grind your coffee, you it'll jam up, it might grind a bit, completely jam up, and then the flashing light will come on or you'll hear this click, 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 clacking sound. And that just shows that this impeller has actually worn down. I mean, they're not made from much, they're just a piece of plastic. Obviously, in these grinders, they're trying to keep the price of everything down, so they wanna just use cheap parts. Now, normally, this will be too expensive to send in to get service because you're probably looking at about an hour's worth of servicing, which you're probably paying $180, plus the blade, which they'll wanna make profit on, so they'll probably charge you another $90, and it just, you might as well buy another machine. However, now, if you're a little bit handy and I'm not very handy at all so if I can fix this then anyone else can fix this but you can buy these impeller blades off of eBay this is just a 3d printed one it's about 30 bucks off eBay and then you can fix it yourself you needed a couple of tools that most people have and these aren't even the greatest tools that I've got I don't have a proper wrench socket wrench I've just got a little one with a, a screwdriver extension a little knife and a couple of long uh, Phillips head screwdrivers it's pretty much all you need and I'm gonna follow the guidelines that have given, been given it to me from iFixit so if you jump onto the iFixit website and look up the BCG 600 which is this dose control grinder uh, they also have the instructions for the BCX 600 IL which is the Breville Smart Grinder Pro and you can fix it so let's have a look at what the issue is and then we can see if this is an impeller sound that you're experiencing at home and you can fix it yourself. So you can hear it's really struggling, there we go. That, see how it turns on for a little bit, it grinds a bit, then the light flashes on. That is what normally indicates the impeller blade is worn out. Sometimes it makes a clack, 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 clacking sound, and that can also be an indicator. So if you're experiencing this at home, this is something that you could do, and I'll show you now. I'm gonna go through it. I'm not going to be teaching you how to do it. I want you to go to ifixit.com and search for the BCG 600 SIL or uh, the grinder that you need to fix. Um, there's a video on there. There's a full mint, like full work through sheets that you can work through it as you go with images. It's really well done. I'm just going to show you can someone with my limited capacity to fix things, because I'm not an engineer, I'm not an electrician, I'm not anything like that, I'm really even bad at making shelves, I wanna know, can I fix this? And if so, you can fix it too. So let's dig into it. Okay, so all you need is these simple tools. A standard knife, that's just to pop some plastic pits off, so as long as it's got a nice pointy end to get in there and flick it off. A long-ish Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, this, they say a number two, and this is a number one Phillips head screwdriver. And then a 10 mil um, socket wrench. And that will help you just get off uh, the nuts that help get rid of the burrs. And then of course you need to buy your impeller blade as well. So I have to take these top burr grinders out. They, they, you just pop out. Sometimes if you haven't taken them out for a long time, they can be very, very stiff. So look at look, the caked on gunk there. That'll jam up as well and make it seem like it's impossible. You sometimes have to bend it so far it looks like it's gonna break, but then it pops out. But it's just anti-clockwise like your normal screwdriver. Okay, you can see all the gunk in there. So we're gonna clean this out and see what the impeller blades look like. So I've decided to get an extra brush, which is what we use on the screens, uh, the dispersion screens to help clean them out. Um, but this is only just, I wanted to see if I can get a shot for you guys to see the impeller blades, because you can actually see how they're worn down. So hopefully I can clean out. Normally you wouldn't bother with this. I'll show you here up close as well. Inside you can actually see the impeller blades quite clearly no, don't go to the full edges. So right there on the side there, there's the impeller blade, you can see it there. And that 
the tip is right there. The tip is sits there and it should actually go a little bit beyond, go a little bit underneath this rim so that it helps get all the coffee. And so what's happening is the coffee is just jamming up there and because it's so fine, for espresso coffee you want it to be really fine, it's just all the oils are just keeping it together and now it's just completely clogged up. So that's what we're gonna get rid of and clean out. So first thing is, it explains, to get your 10 mil socket wrench, pop it on. Now the threads are reversed, so the grinder actually turns anti-clockwise. So to, in, to loosen the nut, I have to turn it clockwise and then it should loosen it. That's it, perfect. So we're gonna come in here, put it on. Now the, it, the grinder goes from anti-clockwise. So if I turned it this way, it'll actually just move the grinder so you can actually turn the grinder. So I actually need to go the opposite way to break the nut. And there we go. There we go, the nuts come off. No, nope, that's my wrench, there's the nut. And then a couple of washers. Don't lose any of these tiny parts. And there we go. That's that's the first part done. Now we should be able to move that off. That's your top burr there. So we'll give that a bit of a clean too. Now you can see what's going on underneath here. All right, it says to, it mentions to put it to the finest setting here. I don't know why, it just says it helps it easier later on. So I've just set it to completely go to the fine setting there. Now I need to get in here and remove a couple of the hidden plastic screw caps. So I've hit a roadblock already. I need to get a better knife. This right there, that little square indent, that is actually a hidden screw cap. And the only way to replace that is to get in there with your knife and pop it out. Now, this knife is blunted end, so it has no way of getting in there. I need to go now find a really sharp steak knife or a pocket knife to be able to pop those off. All right, after that little hiatus, I found a better knife. So this one actually has a super sharp edge, hopefully enough to get in there to pop off these edges, even that. It is such a tight little space to get in. It almost does need to be a pocket knife. Okay, I think I'm making progress. That's why I'm trying to pop off now. These are gonna be butchered by the time I get them off. Maybe I have to do it upside down. Ah, while we're on the subject of the matter, I turned it upside down, and this is the impeller blade. Look how worn down it is. Like, obviously, it's fully junk, but let's get, let's clean it up a bit. Look at that. Look at the edge of that, how much it's worn down compared to the other one, which has got long fingers. So that's just from over the years of grinding it. Just a piece of plastic really, just completely comes apart. Now, it will be interesting to see, this has got a little metal thing that is inside it. This has got two nubs, this has only got one. Don't know what that means, but hopefully it's the right part. Got to be a better way of getting these caps. It like lifts, but it doesn't pop all the way out. So yeah, you just have to commit so that, expect to destroy those little blocks of plastic. There's three in all, and I really had to dig into them because this, the gaps are so tight and I had to destroy it, but that's all right. These were not designed to be taken out very easily. And now that we've gone that, we can take the screws off. I'm on to step seven now. So here, so you get the number one Phillips head screwdriver and that fits neatly in there. Unscrew each of the three screws. I'll just tip it upside down. 
Not the best. Not the best. Two of them came out. Three. Okay, so you might need to tip it upside down to get your screwdrivers, the little screws out. Just set them aside. And now, on to step eight, we're gonna actually take off the base. Set them aside. Just gonna give it a quick clean up because there's a lot of grinds on here now. So just bear with me two seconds while I, before I start getting into the electricals. I wanna make sure the table's nice and clean. Now we have a nice, clean table to work with. So, I've got to take the base off and there are wires attached, so I have to just be careful that I don't break any of those. So you can see here the little wires actually sit into these grooves and when this comes back on, when I put the base back on, I'm gonna to have to get these wires into the same spots. Just gonna make note of how they sit now. So taking note of these wires, that one goes through there. These yellow, blue and brown ones sit in that big gap. Two yellows on that corner. And then the red and the black to the circuit board. So in that last little section. So take out all of the guts of it. Need to move the control card out because we need to access some screws right in the base there. I'm just gonna carefully put it to the side. You can go. So you can see right at the base there, there's this screw and there's another screw on that side. So I've got to take those out and then there's another two down that side there and I've got to take them out as well. So we'll just spend a bit of time getting those out, which is why you need the number two Phillips head driver with an extra seven inches, they say, which is 21 centimeters, but that is not a 21 centimeter um, blade. I mean, what do you call it? Stem. stem. It's not a 21 centimeter stem, however, it's just enough to get in there. It's just so you can get right down into there and not get in the way of the, all the other parts. But this one works fine. Fits in there perfectly. Beautiful, look at that. Next step. We're going to, this is step 10, we're going to turn it back on the right side up. And you have to, it says to be really careful because obviously you don't want to put any stress on the wires here. So it even suggests putting it on a nice cloth because just to keep it from, I'm trying to work out what the best position is here. Maybe this, you don't want to end up bending the wires. And it's actually quite tricky. I mean, I'm gonna give it to there. I don't know, I can't actually fully place it straight way up, so I'm hoping I can access everything I need to here. This is some wires to be careful of. It's not coming out. So, taking that part off, obviously, again, more wires. Get some wires there. Place it on the side. Okay, so one super important thing it says is to take a photo of this. Uh, now actually, let's film this from here. If you wanna see the exact height of this because you wanna get that gap back to as close as possible. Because this is the grind uh, calibration. And that's a little stopper there to stop it from going too far around when you're find, finding it up. So I'm gonna take a photo of that. So another important thing is that this screw, this stop screw here, is at the same height, the ending is at the same height as that top of that plastic there. And that's important because obviously we might have to take that screw out or unscrew it a bit and we need it to go back in exactly that place. This is something to note as well. So in the instructions here, you can look at the photos and they look super clean. So we spent time cleaning all of this out. I haven't even gotten to the stage where we we're supposed to take the impeller out and it, it fell out because it was so worn down. But now I've realized I've got it all opened up 
and there's all of this grind taped on underneath here. So I'm gonna just spend a bit of time and try and get this out. Look at it, it's just crusty as. I'm gonna spend a bit of time getting all of this out to, um, without trying to get it into the wires because the wires are all over the place and any moment I could spill all the grind. So I'll fix that. Made it nice and clean again, so that's great. Very hard to do, because obviously coffee grind goes everywhere. However, I think we managed it, and now we can proceed. Okay, so next step. So I'm gonna take the um, little tiny stop screw about halfway out. So I wanna do it Set of hands. So about halfway out, that releases it. So now I can unscrew this and take this off. The reason you want to, you don't want to take it all the way out is obviously there's a million different holes all around here. Not sure why, but this particular one is the hole that it has to go in. So we don't want to lose sight of that. So if you do want to take the whole thing out, mark that hole. So this now should allow me to keep going past. Uh, gotta go a little bit further out. I'm rotating this now all the way and clockwise until it pops off. It's going down, you can see that I think it's anti-clockwise. I don't know why I'm going clockwise here. Oh, unless that, oh okay, yep, now that pops out. Okay, so there, it might feel like it's odd, you're actually not taking this part off, you're taking the inside part off. But you need to keep past, you need to keep grinding that finer so that you can get um, the leverage and then that pops out. Which is why we had to take a photo of it because we need to know how much we need to grind, uh, screw it back down again. Now, more grinds. Look at that. Keep discovering lots of good grinds everywhere. This is horrible. We haven't even got to the part where we take the impeller blade out, but that's coming right up now. So, in theory, that should be still in there like that. Now, while we're in this part of the cleaning up of the continuous amount of grinds that I keep discovering, you need to check out my videos on how to maintain your grinder and clean it. We've got a video here on your mythos, you're taking the front burrs off and the back burrs off to really give it a deep clean. Also, you, it, this is gonna be unavoidable. This is tiny fine grinds that are going down in here. But when you clean out your Breville grinder, like this burr and get right in there, you'll have less of the problems if you continuously clean it out. So make sure to always clean your grinder out maybe once a week. Otherwise, this is gonna happen. So now we'll just pause and I'll clean out the extra grind uh, found in here. That slots into there. This part slots into that hole. And that slots into that hole. Now we remove the impeller. Woo! There we go. Removed. Also, there was this little guy in there as well. I don't know if you can see it here, but here. This was just sitting on top of the impeller. That it's just a little spacer, but little cotton thread to help it uh, sit smoothly, I guess, and not wear out, maybe. Um, but it looks pretty crusty. So I don't know if we have to do anything with that, replace it or not. Okay, also, need to clean up through here the little chute that runs right into where the impeller pushes it down. Completely caked. Look at that. And heaps of it just fell into my hand. So the whole thing was completely caked up. Grimes are just coming in, so clean all of that out. One thing to note, this is a really messy, from perspective of grimes, really messy job, and you really wanna make sure that you're not getting your computer gear too close to it if you're following along. Ah, uh, so it says to discard the felt ring, don't know, 
we have to replace that. It says to make sure that you still have both washers on here. There should be two washers here. There is one definitely there. I'm trying to see if there's a second one underneath it. I have a feeling there's only one washer. Can you just have a look here and tell me if you think that? There's definitely one washer on there. However, I'm not 100% sure if our other guy, this golden guy, is the second washer that is referred to. But from the photos, it looks like it is. So we're gonna assume that it is for now, but just to note, when they talk about this step here, I believe he's talking about just the one silver washer and then the gold one underneath. It says, before we install the new impeller blade, we need to wash it, pat it down dry, give it a rinse. All right, so I'll be back in two seconds, I'll wash this. All right, so cleaned it now. This is just to get rid of the static charge that might have built up, so he recommends that you rinse it, wash it and rinse it, and then pat it down dry, which I've done now. Now I'm gonna see if we put it on. He said, if it's too tight, you can file it down on the inside. So if your impeller blade doesn't go over the shaft very easily, you can just file it out just to get rid of any bits that might have um, caught in there. So, ours seems to fit very nicely, very snug, which is perfect. So here we go. Ours fits on perfectly, which is great, no filing needed. And now we're going to quickly clean off the top burr, the bottom burr, and uh, secure that over the top of the impeller. All right, so before I go any further, I have discovered that it is missing a, a washer. There was supposed to be the base pedestal, which is the gold one, then two of these washers, these silver washers here. Um, and if you have a look on the website, you can see it clearly shows two washers, thin washers, and then the base pedestal. The other thing I also noticed is when I first showed you, I put in this upside down. These nodules here are meant to face up because they actually directly relate to the base of the top, the bottom burr, and they pop into those holes. So when you're installing it, it doesn't actually say it explicitly, but when you see the picture on the website, you can see the diagram does show that these pop up. Then, put this guy on top. Fits perfectly neat in there. That's great. And that's, yeah, that's gonna be working well. Um, now, the next part, we're gonna have to get down to measure exactly half a mil, which might be tricky, but we'll see how we go. So when I put the top, the bottom burr on, the space, it's hard to show here, but the space between, that's the lip of the drive shaft, there, and the top of here, this top, should be about half a mil, which is very tiny, and this looks like it's a lot deeper, looks like it's more one, one or two mils there. So it recommends you putting the washers on, tightening the nuts down, pushing it basically pushing it down as far as it can go, then taking it apart and then see if that gets that space gets a little bit uh, closer together. So it says it wants to be within half a mil. Put the flat washer on first. Then we get a split washer. See the split washer there. Put that on. Put on the nut. Remembering it's a reverse thread, so you actually tighten it anti-clockwise. And I'm going to press it and press it down as fast hard as I can with my little socket wrench. Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to put that on. Pushed it down as hard as I can go. I don't know if it's made it that much. I mean, it is hard to know if it's made it that much closer. 
It looks still above half a mil, but it's not much I can do about it. So a problem that I find is that actually when I tighten this guy, when I tighten this, at some point it gets too tight and then burrs actually start to move because it's designed to do that. You'll see here, tighten it, and then the burrs move. So I can't tighten it any further. So I'm going to stick another screwdriver in there and then that'll allow me to tighten it without moving the burrs. But I need two hands to do this so I have to stop filming. Super tight. Now wind it back. Let's see if we've made that half a mil clearance. Yeah it's definitely, yeah it's definitely made it lower. I would say yeah. I'm gonna say that that's half a mil. I can't measure it, so I'm gonna to have to judge it by the eye, but it's definitely, let me show you. It is definitely closer to the top now. I'm gonna to reinstall the top, the nut now. So I put in the flat washer. So I put in the flat washer there. Put in the split washer. Put in the nut. So it says to tighten it until the um, motor moves, so until you reach that, and then give it an extra whack just to keep it nice and tight. And the reason is, is because the 3D printed um, impeller blade has a bit of give and you want to compress it as much, otherwise the top burr will be too close with the bottom burr and they'll actually grind together. So we need to push this down as far as we can so that when the top burr fits on, there's just that little bit of give. All right, we're getting close. Now we're up to the grinder, the grinder, the grind adjuster. <laughs> so we're going to put this in, putting this back in now. Taking note, this is going in the back. I mean, don't know if it fits any other way. And then we're going to screw this down and screw this bottom one up rather, and rotate it so that we get back to that point. And I'm going to have to use my camera to um, refer to it. Let's screw this one back up now. So we need to set the top screw, this stopper screw, right near the point of the little switch here. This just helps this burr, like the holder, align with the um, thread more easily and it catches. So I'll just show you that from this perspective. So this, you just rotate that around to it sits in that spot there. There we go. And then place your holder in, slot it in, there we go. Now the next part, we have to screw this in whilst placing it down. So I might need to do this with two hands. Perfectly, that was so smooth. So now I want to do this right at the top, so it's flush. And then we're going to adjust it back down to where it was in our photo. There we go, that's now flush. So, on to step 17. We're going to reverse that now to refer to my photo. Alright, so get your photo back up and now reverse the direction. So going clockwise now until you get that same The way to remember it, this is really important, the stop screw should sit back in its original place. So even though I thought where it was was right, this now sits exactly where it was located before on the other side of the plastic uh, part there, the white little plastic part. So yeah, so if that's past there, you can see here, I actually want that to sit on this side. So I'm going to rotate it back just enough. So now I know that that was exactly where it was the time before. Nicely done. Now it's time to start putting everything back together. So carefully 
put the top back on. Beautifully fits perfectly there. We're gonna put the three hidden screws back in. Yep, so they get these three things back into this part here. We're gonna put the screws back into those tiny little holes there, the hidden screw plugs. Screw them, drill, screw them back in. So one thing, critical thing that I just realized is that in moving the top and taking the top off, I've actually somehow made the fine line move a little bit. So I need to now just unscrew that screw again, readjust that back to the right spot, and then screw it in. So now, just to make sure, I'm going to dial it all the way around, just to make sure it doesn't overshoot past the coarser spot. Perfect, lines perfectly up with that. So this is critical before you move on, because you don't want to have to actually pull it all apart again, but there it goes down to the finer setting and we can rotate it all the way through to the coarsest setting. Okay, now we need to reinstall each of the four screws. These are the ones, no, those are the ones. So be very careful about the screws because they are actually different lengths and I didn't make note, obviously there's the three in the top, that's easy because there's only three. However, I didn't really take note of the four. There's two lots of fours, but the longer ones, I'm fairly sure, are the ones that go inside. So I need to put them back in now, and hope, and then drop it. Definitely you want a magnetic screwdriver, magnetized screwdriver, because if you drop the screws anywhere but the hole that they're in, you probably lost them. There's some couple of other holes, chasms down there, which you'll never see the screwdriver again. You'll never see the screw again. Now, there is another thing to import. When you've got your screws in, you want to put the um, power, the circuit board back in. There is actually, I only just noticed this, but there's two tiny slots. One there, and one over here somewhere, it's really hard to see. Just there. And that's actually where the power board needs to um, slot into in order to put it to go down. So make sure you do that. All right, now we need to remember where each wire went. So those two yellow ones came on the edge there. I think the big ones came here and that. The blue, the brown, and the green all go in there, and the big fat green, oh, okay, so the big fat green actually goes on that side. Okay, putting this base back on was actually probably one of the harder parts of this task, other than getting the little plastic um, hidden screw caps off. Just getting everything neatly in there but it does go down as long as you get those wires so they're not sitting on top and doesn't get cut off. It does pack down. And now we just have to put these last screws on the base to hold it in place. All right, so we've got a completed grinder again now. Now just got to put those little plastic hidden screw caps back on. Never have to look at them again, hopefully, in my lifetime. They were definitely way harder than, maybe I didn't have the good enough knife, but um, that and putting the wires back in was probably the hardest part. Everything else has actually been really straightforward and super easy. Which way do they go? Oh yeah, that one. So they should go in quite quickly and easily. They're not in the right, they are square, uh, but they've got one rounded corner, I see. So yeah, there's actually, they look square, but there's one tiny, tiny rounded corner. I'll try and film it for you. So you can see here, that, that corner there is slightly rounded. There we go, you can see that quite nicely there. And then it correlates with this screw cap. And there's a tiny, you can just see it there, tiny little part there. That, that's what you need to aim for. And that's how it lines up. It goes in perfectly smooth. So if it doesn't go in like just with one smooth movement, it's not the right way in. But 
that's good to know. Before you put grinds in, we want to just install the hopper and make sure that everything lines up with. All right, now just run it without any grinds in there and make sure that you go from the fine to the coarse settings. Oh yeah, you've got to plug it in. So when I went down to the finest grind, it definitely sounded like the birds were touching. So. Yeah, it's got. Definitely doesn't sound great. Birds might be too, too close together. I feel like the birds definitely are touching. It sounds, it's got that really high pitched sound that's commonly the two birds just too close together. I'm going to see if it grinds at five and so we'll give it a try and hopefully it grinds. Seems pretty good. I mean, that is sounding pretty good. So I might go a little bit finer and see if it still screeches. Yeah, so it's probably a little bit, I've uh, probably uh, made the birds too close together somehow. I mean, I did follow the instructions, but maybe it wasn't originally calibrated that way. However, I'm getting fine enough grinds at the five. So next test is to see how it grinds and run it through the machine to see if that point, the five step here, which sounds really good and the grind is pretty fine. If that's fine enough, I don't need to worry about it because I'm not gonna go down to fine. When we calibrate commercial grinders, we always go down to the fine and make that just chirp, the two blades chirp there anyway. So we probably don't need to use this. It's working fine now. So we just need to test it out on a coffee machine. Beautiful. There you go. We managed to fix it and it's working, I reckon, 99% well. The only thing that I would have liked to have done is calibrate the grind, but the burrs. But having said that, we took the old impeller, replaced it, ended up with some extra felt just for fun. And now we can enjoy our coffee again on the old dose control grinder. This also works for the Breville Smart Grinder Pro and probably a whole bunch of Sunbeam Cafe Series grinders as well. That sound that you heard in the beginning was the impeller blade. 99% of the time, I reckon it is the impeller blade that goes first because that just wears down. So if you have one of these and you have the same problems, it took me probably close to three hours to do it. I didn't know what I was doing. I was reading, I was also filming. Probably I would say someone doing it for the first time might take two hours, but it was fun. There was only two frustrating parts. The rest of the time it was straightforward and easy. Saved myself $200, probably cost myself $200 in wages, but I saved myself money and got myself my little grinder working again. Well, it's not even mine. This is actually belongs to Holly's mum. So she'll be happy that she has her grinder back. Big shout out as well to ifixit.com and Ben Gottemola. Gotamola? I don't know how to say your name, Ben. Thank you for writing that article. It was brilliant. You really did a great job with all of the images, the arrows, everything was straightforward. I really enjoyed the process. I would probably do it again if I had to. And it really, yeah, I, I just big, big shout out to go watch ifixits.com's their own uh, version of this. But of course, if you like this content and you wanna see more videos from me making similar things like this for you at home, please give me a like, subscribe, or if you wanna ask a question, pop it in the comments section below and I'll reply as soon as I can. And I'm Ryan, your Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your breakfast.